In Afghanistan, the Apache attack helicopter is constantly on alert to protect ground troops in battle and carry out aerial escort duties. But of course, the air crew can't get anywhere without their ground team of engineers, weapon loaders and refuelers. For the latest on the work of the Joint Aviation Group in theatre, here's Julie Knox. For 24 hours, these groundies are on. Once they've prepped the VHR, very high readiness cabs, making sure they're good to go should they get scrambled, they can relax in their crew tent until there's a shout. I love the just matter of seconds. You can just be going from sitting down to relaxing, having a laugh with your mates to on. That's it, you're out, you're running, you're getting all the um, blanks off, and you just feel happy because you know that the helicopter's going up to support someone so who actually needs it. I normally race the blokes out of the thing anyway. Do you? I like to think I'm the fastest bloke here. The ALPC is the guy that goes out onto the point, plugs into the aircraft. He will then give clearance to the pilots to start engines. Uh, if, however, a problem occurs with the um, APU engines, any electrics, he will tell me. I'll run from the point into one of these hangars to grab one of the guys in here to run out and hopefully sort out the problem so we can get the aircraft off the ground and support our blokes. Dominic looks after flares, knowing which ones are on which airframe and when they'll reach their expiry. And it's not just unstable materials that have to be handled carefully. Burns, when you touch the cab as well, you don't realise it. So when you're back in the UK, it doesn't really bother you because it's such cold back there. But when you're out here, you touch it, ha, ah, it hurts. <laughs> so you do get quite, a bit, um, quite some burn marks. A very high readiness shout is likely to mean the ugly call sign needs to show up at a firefight or escort the medical emergency response team to just injured soldiers. The Apaches on 15 minutes notice to move by day, 30 minutes at night. We uh, get them off the ground in about eight minutes. That's from us getting the phone call to the pilots actually taxiing off. Uh, so it's pretty quick. If the pilot then reports a fault with the aircraft and they have to move into the spare, it's in a case of all hands to the pump. You know. The air crew have a, a lot of kit that they have to cram into quite a small space, so we have to grab it, move it over to the spare aircraft, make sure that that's armed as well, uh, got the right amount of bullets, rockets and hellfire. Yeah, so. And you do this at night time as well? You do it at night as well, yeah. What are the challenges there? Well, obviously, vision. I mean, it's quite a dark pan that we work on. Uh, there's no exterior lighting, so it's predominantly done with head torches, that kind of thing. So there is a chance you could drop something, not notice that you've dropped it, and that kind of thing. And actually knowing where everyone is as well. You know, it's quite important, especially on the startup, because you don't want you know, people still in the wrong place. There are more planned sorties, for example, to overwatch foot patrols. And the ground crew can make those aircraft ready with missiles and bullets in slower time. There are routine and rush job maintenance works, and while they never leave Camp Bastion themselves, the air troopers feel they've had a hand in delivering the blows in the fight. Yeah, it's quite fulfilling, you know, especially knowing that yeah, if we do get a shout, you know, it's usually the guys on the ground that have requested us. And if we've loosed off you know, munitions, it's you know, us doing our little bit. Even though we're not actually on the front line, we're still providing a, a service. Theirs is a service their colleagues who wear wings certainly recognise. As one pilot told me, the ground crews here earn a lot more than they get paid. Julie Knox, Forces News, Afghanistan.